When I was in Iraq, I saw the devastation that our invasion and occupation had met out upon the, the Iraqi people. I saw and at times participated in the dehumanization and de degradation of the Iraqi people. My experience over there were violating people in their own homes. What else is there to talk about? You know, I, you can't force your will on people in their own country and say that it's justified and say that it's a mission that you need to complete and finish doing. People, by robbing others of their inherent dignity, by denying them respect, and by treating them as the less than human other, we ultimately rob. Really views Iraq veterans against the war as a threat. I mean, we are saying that GIs have an obligation to resist illegal orders, and while that is compliant with international law, the fact is is that it's threatening to the U.S. military because the U.S. military gives illegal orders on a daily basis. It's not honorable, it's not dignity, and it's not something we should associate ourselves with as the American people, or as people in general for that matter. We've got to stop drawing these lines and declaring war on people and calling them our enemies, which, which rationalizes doing things that we would never otherwise justify doing. Hello everyone. Um... I'm making this video in response to something I watched yesterday. Uh, I watched a rerun of uh, Republican debate. I forgot which one it was, but uh, basically it was on, on that particular clip that I watched. It was Senator Huckabee and Dr. Ron Paul going at it, and it started out when uh, Senator Muck Huckabee's talking about the war in Iraq and whether we should stay or not. And uh, he says. We can't put things in a different context and claim that it justifies the very things we accuse them of doing. Torture, mass graves, we're torturing people in Iraq every day. We're creating bigger graves than Saddam Hussein ever created. When are we going to realize this? When are we going to realize... Good evening. Last night I uh, performed two songs and said about three minutes worth of stuff and uh, y'all got me in trouble. I was told that I had to talk more. <laughs> uh... Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Happy International Peace Day. Yeah. It's a wonderful day. It's, uh, it's my first International Peace Day as a peacemaker. Right. Uh, it's uh, been a long, long journey from warrior to peacemaker, let me tell you. <laughs> That's it's actually not true. When I was 19, I, uh, I had uh, about six to eight months before I went in uh, to actual active duty. It was on the late entry program. I worked at a car wash. I saved up $700, and I went and I saw every person I could remember that I said, hey, sometime I'm going to come out and see you. And I didn't do that because I was 19 and I just had some money to blow. I did that because I thought I was going to die. I did that because I thought there was going to be a war. I thought that I was going to go and I was going to volunteer and I wanted to because I was going to... It's been a long journey home. Uh, right now I'm even facing the uh, possibility for a third deployment. I got no... I don't suffer, you know, even though I, I hate some people back at home. But I still want to do my job for everybody else, you know, for all the innocent people. And I have so much pride for my country, so much pride for my home, my government, you know. And the then they, I, I got as the time went on, and as the casualties grew grew higher and grew higher, rules started getting a little bit lenient. And from things going on and seeing your friends get getting blown up and killing every day we didn't really question them because we just wanted we were angry we just wanted to do we just wanted to do our job and come back then you uh, as the rules went on start leaning it went down from person having a weapon Sergeant Corrigan I'm um, residing in Then they, I, I got sh sh shipped off to Osan, you know, in, in Korea for, for like one week, you know, to go pick up some more, more, more people. And after that, we went all the way over, over to, to Baghdad, you know. We stopped in, we dropped off in Kuwait first, and then we... We're dying over there. 
all the loss of life. I've seen big old you know, the death huge ground pits filled with bodies that are being burned or buried or, 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 or covered up. And how can they hide that from the rest of the world? You know, how can they hide all them deaths, all them innocent people? You know, we, we, it's like mass genocide on, on us. You know, my kind of, our country has become terrorist. That's why people hate us, man. And um, I love my country, man. I'm I don't suffer, you know, even though I, I hate some people back at home. But I still want to do my job for everybody else, you know, for all the innocent people. Yeah. Life. You know, the death toll of Iraqis, it's not what they say in the news. It's like, Hundreds of thousands of people. I, I didn't know that many people could die, you know, who, 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 you know, and, and could be hidden from, 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 from the world, you know, until I was in Iraq. You know, they, they, I've seen big old, huge ground pits filled with bodies that are being burned.